Hey guys, Stephen Cox here, and today we're going to be learning Bill Withers' song, Use Me, on the U-Bass. So if you like videos like these, please hit subscribe below and consider becoming a patron. This is actually a Patreon request for Greg, so if you'd like to become a patron, just look down in the description below. I want to give a special shout out to Greg Fairweather because I used his transcription of the Use Me bass line. So if you want to hear the full bass line with all the different variations on it, please check out his video. It's also down in the description below. So as a U-Bass player, we have two ways we can approach this song depending on the context we're playing in. If we're playing in a full band setting, I recommend playing the bass line because somebody is probably already playing the keyboard lick that's probably the most famous part of this song. Basically, if you have someone in the band playing that, feel free to play the bass line. But if you're going to play with a whole bunch of ukulele players, for instance, if you're doing this in an ensemble, then I think the keyboard lick is more important than the bass line to represent so I would choose to do that one instead. So first, let's learn the bass line. So the bass line, as you can tell, is very syncopated and very interesting. It's very funky. So we're going to start off with a seventh fret on the A string, then play the open E string. Then we're going to do the fifth fret, sixth fret, and seventh fret on the A string. Then we're going to do those same three notes again, fifth, sixth, and seventh on the A string. Then we're going to play the open E string, then 7 and 6 on the E string. And let's talk about the rhythm on that. So here's how it sounds. And we're going to end up on the 5th fret on the E string. So that's what that last note was, even though I didn't mention that yet. First we have two 8th notes, 1 and. That second 8th note is tied over to a 16th note, so we're not going to play beat 2 but we are going to play the E, the AND, and the UH when we play that 5, 6, 7 on the A string. So we got 1 E AND uh, 2 E AND uh, 3 E AND UH and the second time that we do that we're still doing the same thing. We're leaving out beat 3 and playing the E, the AND, and the UH after that. So if you're not familiar with how to count 16th notes um, you may have to watch another video to kind of get caught up but the basic idea is 1 E AND a, 2 E AND a, 3 E AND a, 4 E AND a, where the numbers and the ands would also be where eighth notes would start. And then the extra 16th notes thrown in are represented by an E and an uh. So I'm going to be counting one E and a two E and a, but if they're eighth notes, I'm only going to be playing on the numbers and the ands. And if they're 16th notes, you'll hear stuff being played on E's and uh's as well. So here's the example. One E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and uh. So that's the first measure, and the second measure sounds like this. Which is really cool. So the second measure, we're going to start on the 5th fret on the E string two times. Then we're going to play the 7th fret harmonic on the D string. So to play a harmonic, we're going to put our finger lightly over the actual piece of metal of the 7th fret, now this is important, don't push down. We are touching the string, but the string is floating above the fretboard, not touching a fret. It's just hovering above the fret. And then we'll play it right over the seventh fret, the actual piece of metal. And we'll play two seventh frets there. So pluck, pluck. So fifth fret on the E string twice, then a little bit faster on the two seventh fret harmonics on the D string. Then we go back to the 5th fret on the E string, and then we'll play that note again, followed by the 7th fret and the 8th fret on the E string. Then we have a short pause, 
And then we've got fourth, fifth, and sixth frets all on the A string. So that whole measure sounds like one and two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a uh, kind of weird, very, very syncopated, right? So on beat one, we have that fifth fret. Then we'll play the next eighth note after that, so the and after beat one. Then when we do the 16th notes, they're on beat two, followed by the 16th partial right after it, which would be E, two E. Then we wait through the and. We don't play anything on that and right there. And then we'll play the fifth fret on the E string on the uh. So we got one and two E and uh. See how I skipped over the and and played the uh? I still said it so that you could hear it, but I didn't play it. So after that, we hold that note out from the uh of beat two past um, beat three. So we're just holding that through beat three. Then we play that note again, the fifth fret on the E string, followed by the seventh and the eighth fret on the E string, and those are all back to back. And then we pause um, so we don't play on beat four. That's that syncopation but then we do play on the E, the and, and the uh. And we do that fourth fret, fifth fret, and sixth fret on the A string. So here it is slowly with the counting. One and two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and uh. So let's play it together. One, two, three, four E and uh, one E and uh, two E and uh, three. And uh, four E and uh. so that's that part. So now let's put the first two measures together. One E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and uh. and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and uh, one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and uh. so it's kind of a cool groove. So that's the first half of it. The second half of it's very similar. Um, in fact, measure three is exactly the same as measure one. So we've got that whole all the same. So I'm not really going to go over that. That's just the same as the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 notes of the song, AKA measure one. After that, we get to measure four, which is kind of like the response to it. And this time there's a lot more space in the response. So the second half will sound like this. And, uh, uh. Kind of weird to hear it out of context, but that's kind of what it'll sound like. So I'm going to count through and play both those measures together. Measures three and four, so you get the idea. Three E and a uh, four E and a uh, one E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a uh, one E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a. Uh. Kind of weird. So in measure four. We're gonna play the fifth fret on the E string two times. One and then we're gonna wait for a little while. We don't play on beat two. Um, we don't even play on beat three or the E after beat three. So we're silent for two E and a three E. We're not gonna play there. Um, but when we get to the and after beat three, we're gonna be playing the seventh fret and the eighth fret on the E string. And then we're gonna be playing the fifth fret and the sixth fret on the A string but it's very syncopated. So after beat three, we've got three E and a. Uh. So that seventh and eighth fret on the E string are gonna be on the and and the a uh after beat three. And then um, we hold that out through beat four. And then we'll play the fifth fret on the A string on the E after beat four. So E is uh, the timing, not, not a note name. Okay, and then the sixth fret, will happen on the uh. So I'm gonna play it slowly just so you get the idea of how it sounds. Three E and uh, four E and uh. So playing on the E's and the uh's, which is kind of a cool thing to do. It's very syncopated. It might be kind of tricky to follow at first, but it's very funky. So now that we've got that down, let's just play from the beginning to through measure four two times. And I'll do it with you slowly and then we'll do it at full speed. 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 4
two, E and a three, E and a four, E and a one, E and a two, E and a three, E and a four, E and a one, E and a two, E and a three, E and a four, E and a one, E and a two, E and a three, E and a four, E and a one, E and a two, E and a three, E and a four, E and a one, E and a two, E and a three, E and a four, E and a. Now we'll play at full speed. So that's awesome to be able to play the bass line. It's super cool, super syncopated, but it's not the most familiar thing in the song. The most familiar instrumental part of the song is going to be the keyboard groove. And a lot of times bands will just lock in and the bass player and the guitar player will play just that part at the same time. I've played it this way with many groups and it just has a sort of like power effect rather than being kind of funky and laid back like the Bill Withers version. It can be like in your face. So you can do that. Or you could also do this if you're playing with a bunch of ukulele players that are singing and playing and they're just kind of strumming a funky rhythm over the E minor uh, 7 chord to the A7 and you've got just whatever option you want because nobody's playing the keyboard riff. I think this is a good time to play it. So here's how it sounds. So I want to mention that there are a lot of variations of this riff within the song itself and that you can pick different rhythmic variations that happen if you'd like to. So um, one of the variations instead of sounding like this you might hear it more like this and so that changes the last note of the riff but it also um, adds space in a different place and makes it slightly less syncopated um, we're only going to go over the one groove, the way that it happens at the very intro of the song, but a lot of people will typically pick whatever their favorite one is from the song and just use that throughout the whole song or do a little variation between one and two of them. So for now, we'll just keep it simple. So what we're going to do first, we're going to play the fifth fret on the A string and hammer onto the seventh fret. Then we're going to play the fifth fret on the D string. Then we're going to go back to the 7th fret on the A string, then the 5th fret on the A string, the 5th fret on the D string, then back to the 7th fret on the A string, then back to the 5th fret on the D string, then the 7th fret on the A string, followed by the 5th fret on the A string. And since there are only two notes in the next measure, I'll just go ahead and say them. We're going to go to the 4th fret on the A string, and then go back to the 7th fret on the A string. So the rhythm is a lot harder than the notes. But let's go ahead and try to play through that and just get an idea of how it sounds. So I'm going to count and play it so you can hear how it works with the rhythm. 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a and then you just stay silent for the rest of the measure. 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. Sorry, I got impatient. Normally I would just count that out for you. But that's the riff. And then we just repeat that riff over and over again throughout the song, with the exception of one spot where um, everybody in the band cuts out for four measures. And it's kind of like the, so sometimes it starts with brother, if you only knew you'd wish you were in my shoes, that whole part. Just four measures right there of silence, and then you come back in with the riff on the following measure. Let's talk through the rhythm, and then we'll play this together. So with this rhythm, it's very syncopated. It's very tricky. So first, I'm just going to demonstrate it and then talk through it. So here's how it goes. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E. E and a, four E and a. Okay, so when we play that fifth fret on the A string, that's beat one. 
Then we're going to hammer on to the 7th fret on the A string on the E after beat 1. Then we're going to hit the 5th fret on the D string on the AND after beat 1. And we're going to hold it through for the rest of that beat. Then beat 2, we're going to play the 7th fret on the A string. We're going to skip over the E, we're going to hold it through the E. Then play the 5th fret on the A string on the AND and then the 5th fret on the D string on the uh, and both of those are following beat 2. We're going to hold that out through the downbeat of beat 3. Then on the E after beat 3, the timing E, we're going to play the 7th fret on the A string, and we're going to hold that out until we get to the uh after beat 3, where we're going to play the 5th fret on the D string. We're going to hold that out through beat 4, the beginning of beat 4, and then on the E after beat 4, the timing, we're going to play the 7th fret on the A string. And then for the AND, after beat 4, we're going to play the 5th fret on the A string. And then we're going to hold that out for the rest of that measure. And then on beat 1 of the next measure, we'll play the 4th fret on the A string. And then we'll go to the 7th fret on the A string on the AND of, beat, of measure 2. The AND of beat 1 of measure 2. Blah, that's confusing. Um, so hopefully you followed me through that. If that's really, really confusing for you guys, it may just be better to listen to how it sounds and just kind of work with that sound until you're fine-tuned. But some people like to learn from the timing, so that's why we went through that route. So now let's play that one together. We'll play it slowly at first. We'll play it four times total, and then we'll play it full speed. Three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four. Alright, so now let's play at full speed. Alright guys, thank you so much again for watching. If you'd like the full bass line, Greg Fairweather has a great video on it and I've got a link down in the description below. If you'd like to request an arrangement, become a patron, that's also in the description below. And if you just like the video, feel free to hit the thumbs up or subscribe. And I will see you guys on Thursday for a live stream and next Tuesday for another video like this.